Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. Um, today we're going to have some controversy, which is not actually surprising to those of you who listen to me every week, but this article that I'm going to reference here is written in response to an article and video posted by a well-known content provider in the plant-based community. And I know that what I'm going to say is going to cause some controversy because it involves correcting the record in terms of what is stated on the video and in the article, but there is really no choice. I have to respond because our members and those who follow me are writing and calling and they're confused about the claims made in the video and how to reconcile the things that were said with the concepts that we teach here. So I'll start by outlining the context of the discussion we're going to have. At Wellness Forum Health, our specialty is informed medical decision making, which involves helping our members to look at evidence concerning the risks and benefits of taking any course of action regarding health in order to make better decisions. Evidence evaluation isn't just limited to diagnostic tests and procedures and drugs, but also extends to diet and lifestyle choices. And um, to be clear, issues are not decided by, by any, you know, what anybody at Wellness Forum Health likes or does or prefers, but rather what the consumer decides to do in response to objective information. One of the most important aspects of the process is that in order for it to work, we have to make sure that research studies are reliable and also that they're reported accurately, both to our members and when we make public comments, like what I'm doing right here, that they're accurate too. Um, when presenting diet information to our members, we have to admit, we have to state, because this is what the evidence shows, that there is no evidence showing that everybody needs to adopt a vegan diet in order to achieve and maintain optimal health. And in fact, none of the long-lived and healthy populations that we're all fond of citing in support of our dietary recommendations are vegan. Even the Okinawans eat some animal food. It's true that these populations eat very small amounts of animal food, but the fact that they do means that claiming that these populations and their eating habits um, really are the equivalent of a mandate for everybody to adopt a vegan diet is, is just plain false and disingenuous. Thus, our eating plan allows for up to three servings of animal food per week, provided that it is organic if it's a land animal, wild caught if it's a fish and does not include dairy. Now, for the record, I eat a vegan diet. Most of the people who work at Wellness Forum Health eat a vegan diet or pretty close to it. We're not shy about recommending vegan diets to people who have serious health issues like cancer or advanced coronary artery disease. We also don't talk anybody out of adopting a vegan diet. And if somebody is inclined in that direction, we really try to give them the push to take the plunge and go on ahead and do it. So we don't have a disagreement with veganism. In fact, a lot of us practice it. But by conducting ourselves in this way, where we adhere to the evidence and, and um, uh, let that be the guide, we're, we avoid doing what we criticize so many other people for doing, which is misrepresenting the science. An additional benefit, and I think we do have to point this out, is that we're able to interest more people in adopting a better diet. Research shows that there are two reasons why people generally will decide to make a diet or lifestyle change, or any change for that matter. The first is because they are convinced that it will benefit them, and then the second reason is they can actually vis visualize themselves doing whatever it is that is being contemplated, whether it's an exercise program or a dietary change. The reality is that if we take a look at facts right now, most people are not ready to adopt a vegan diet, and if veganism is presented as the only choice, they're likely to walk away. This is evidenced both by the percentage of people who identify themselves as vegan and also the growth rate in the vegan population. In Israel, 5% of the population reports that they are vegan. 1% of Germans say they are. 2% of the residents in the United Kingdom say they're vegan. And during the last 15 years, vegan eaters have increased from 1% to 2% of the population here in the United States. Now we have a serious problem. At the current rate of increase, by 2045, 8% of the U.S. population will be vegan. That's doubling every 15 years as it has been. Studies show that penetration has to reach 14% in order to reach what we call the tipping point, which is when something really starts to take off. So what this means is we can expect that to happen in about the year 2060. We think that for the sake of public health, animal welfare, the environment, we're better off attracting tens of thousands of people to a plan that is not as rigid, but people are willing to do and stick with, than it is for most people to hear what we have to say about dietary change and choose to do nothing in response. 
We have another problem too. Research shows that 85% of people who adopt a vegan diet do it for ethical reasons, not health, and that in many large studies, vegan eaters don't enjoy better health outcomes than omnivores and lacto-ovo vegetarians. The principal reason for this last point is that people who change their eating patterns for ethical reasons eat a vegan diet, but often not a health-promoting vegan diet. That led one research group to conclude Quote, this raises the question of whether our health advantage, the health advantages of a vegan diet result from just avoiding animal products or from an overall concern for health that includes choosing nutritious foods and engaging in other health promoting behaviors. All right, that was a long introduction to what I want to talk about, but you need that for context. So now to the problem at hand. Our popular content provider with a very wide audience posted a video in which he discusses why even eating a little bit of animal food in the diet is not a good idea. He starts with the accurate statement that it has been known for decades that eating a plant-based diet is protective against type 2 diabetes. He then goes on to mislead by claiming that one study showed that people who eat no animal foods at all have a 78% lower risk of diabetes than those who even include a little bit of it in the diet. Curious about this, I reviewed the study and was flabbergasted actually to find out what it showed. Diabetes incidence was evaluated for five types of diets for tens of thousands of people. And those five diets were vegans, lacto-ovo vegetarians, pesco vegetarians, semi-vegetarians, and non-vegetarians. And I won't read to you the numbers. I mean, these articles are posted in the Health Briefs Library and you can go there to see the references and everything else. But the difference in diabetes incidence between vegans and the other groups ranged from a little over one third of 1% for semi-vegetarians to 1.58% non-vegetarians. The author of this article video has done what we all complain that the drug companies do, reporting data in relative terms in order to exaggerate the benefits instead of absolute terms which might make the proposed treatment in the case of drugs or dietary change in the case of what we're talking about here less attractive. The authors of this study wrote vegetarian diets, and they actually said this in their conclusion, vegan, lacto, ovo, and semi were associated with a substantial and independent reduction in diabetes incidence. The authors acknowledged the superior, superiority of all versions of plant-based eating as a better alternative than not eating a plant-based diet, but this was certainly not a, an argument necessarily for veganism. Now, to further add to the interpretation of this data, one of the criteria we use to evaluate information here involves determining if the results of a study um, and, and what it says about a proposed action make a meaningful difference in the person's life, not just that researchers were able to show some type of statistical significance. Um, without going into a side tangent that would take longer than we have here, it is very, um, uh, it's very possible, and it's done all the time, uh, to find all kinds of statistical significance by measuring lots of things in large cohorts and so that doesn't necessarily mean that it's worth talking about. So in the case of this study and looking at meaningful difference in a person's life we might ask um, what is somebody willing to do for a about a half a percent or a third of a percent uh, reduction in the risk? And the answer is usually not much and I'll give you an example outside of the diet field. I'll take myself for example. Suppose you shared a study with me that said that for people my age, and I'm 60, avoiding driving at night reduces the risk of an automobile accident by one half of 1%. Would I stop driving at night? I don't think so. I mean, that's a big thing to give up my social life, a lot of the things that I do um, for such a small reduction in, reduction in risk. It just doesn't make any sense, at least to me. Somebody else might decide that that's important, but not enough to make me do it. Um, and that is the case with many of our members. If we just tell them the truth about the animal foods issue, a lot of them are not ready to give up animal foods, at least at this time. A lot of them come later. We have around here what I call a lot of accidental vegans who decide to become vegan later on, sort of just by the course of things they didn't intend to. So the bottom line is I'd rather have a person here eating two or three servings of organic animal food or wild caught fish a week who takes our classes and learns about some things that really do reduce the risk of bad things happening by a whole lot, like learning the truth about mammograms and PSA testing, than walking away because the diet seems too extreme. An even worse scenario in my book would be for someone to find out that we misrepresented or exaggerated research in order to get people to, quote, join our club. This isn't a club, it's a healthcare company, and what we're trying to do is help people make evidence-based decisions. 
Well, our popular writer goes on to ask another question. What about eating a really healthy diet with just a little meat? Is it better to eat none at all? He then explains that up until now, we have not had an answer to this question of whether completely avoiding meat and fish would further improve health outcomes, but a new study settles the issue. This study was undertaken because vegetarian diets are shown to improve glucose metabolism and reduce the risk for diabetes in Westerners, but um, the researchers were curious about whether Chinese vegetarian diets had the same effect on Chinese people. So what the researchers did was to evaluate the association between diet and diabetes or impaired fasting glucose in over 4,300 Taiwanese Buddhist volunteers who ate a vegetarian diet or an omnivorous diet. Vegetarians, as you might expect, had a higher intake of carbohydrate, fiber, calcium, magnesium, total and non-heme iron, folate, vitamin A, um, lower intakes of saturated fat, cholesterol, and vitamin B12. They also had higher intakes of soy, vegetables, and whole grains, but, and this is very important, they had the same intake of dairy as the omnivores. In this study, the prevalence of diabetes in the vegetarians versus the omnivores was better but the vegetarians were better off. And the researchers concluded, we found a strong protective association between Taiwanese vegetarian diet and diabetes IFG after controlling for various potential confounders and risk factors. The problem here was the vegetarians were eating as much dairy as the omnivores. So while attempting to make a case for giving up all animal foods, our author cites the first study I talked about in which there is little difference between vegans and those who eat small amounts of animal food and another study which included no vegans. In fact, this study that included the dairy-eating Buddhist vegetarians could be misused by some to show that eating a little dairy with your plant-based diet still places you at low risk for diabetes, which is true, but of course it increases your risk of cancer. But this, the, I, I can't even believe this study was included in the discussion. Buried in the content of our popular content provider is one line in which the author admits that the issue is not entirely black and white and that any steps made in the direction of eating a more plant-based diet can significantly improve health. But this kind of gets lost in the rest of all of this. And of course, anybody who looks up the studies is going to have an equally difficult time. Now, the reason that I'm writing this article, I want to be crystal clear about this. I don't want to pick a fight with this author or anybody else. I think we've had way too much fighting and finger pointing and that sort of thing in our community already. For those of you who promote a vegan diet, I applaud you. I send patients to inpatient facilities like uh, in, in California, for example, that promote, actively promote a vegan diet. I am very supportive. But I think it's fair to hold ourselves to the same standard we are asking some of our colleagues to adhere to, that we criticize all the time, by the way, which is to make sure that statements that are made about diet, health, and medicine are accurate. So I've deliberately withheld the name of the individual. I don't think we need to get into that. Um, I hope that my, the intent of my uh, taking this issue on um, is not to be critical. It's to make sure that we have an accurate record of what the information that was put forth in the article actually said. All right, that's my piece. This article will be published in the Health Brace Library within a few minutes of the time that you see this video. As always, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you next Tuesday with more news.